at a conference. At the time, he was still completing his doctorate, but he was doing amazing things even then. Um, he's extremely well published, and now he is an epidemic uh, intelligence service officer at the CDC where he continues to do amazing things. So he is truly one of our success stories. So please welcome Dr. Jeffries. Good afternoon to you all, my brothers and sisters. It gives me great pleasure to be in the company of such great minds, and I'm very grateful to Dr. Wyatt and Dr. Williams for inviting me to give this presentation. Um, and it's on a topic that has been a very keen of interest to me, given that I'm a member of this community, but given that also a lot of the work that Greg and others have talked about, we know that individual liver risk behaviors don't drive the disparities that we see among black and other MSMs. So as we think more broadly about prevention and think specifically about some of the contextual factors that Dr. Wheeler and others have brought up, I want to draw, draw in our minds to homophobia and biphobia as types of sexual minority oppression and stigma that drive HIV risk for many of the men in our population. And I pose a question to you all, and that is how do homophobia and biphobia affect HIV infection risk among black MSM and black MSMW in the United States. And in this, in this presentation, I have two objectives. I first want to discuss homophobia and biphobia as key social determinants of health and specifically HIV risk for black MSM and black MSMW. And in doing so, I hope to advance the development of inter interventions to decrease homophobia and biphobia experienced within our population. And I'll begin by discussing homophobia, outlining relevant conceptual issues. And I'll also present some evidence of homophobia's effect upon HIV risk from two investigations that I was fortunate to lead at CDC. I'll then discuss biphobia and highlighting conceptual issues, issues relevant to it, and also presenting what I believe to be probable evidence of biphobia's effect upon HIV risk from one investigation. And I'll conclude with the discussion of interventions to decrease homophobia and biphobia at the societal level. So what do I mean by homophobia and biphobia? Well, homophobia typically refers to negative perception of or treatment of gay men or MS solely because of their sexual orientation. And similarly, biphobia refers to negative perception of or treatment of bisexual men or MSMW solely because of their sexual orientation. As types of sexual minority oppression and stigma, they both emerge from an underlying societal belief that sexual minorities are inherently immoral or sinful, and their manifestations may include their disregard for, hostility toward, as well as institutionalized discrimination of sexual minorities. And a good example would be the inability to marry same-sex partners. So let's begin by discussing homophobia. And why does homophobia matter when we think about the HIV risk posed to black MSM in the United States? Well, a recent study by Sarah Glick and Matt Golden showed us that 55% of Americans believed that homosexuality was always wrong in 2008. But the proportion of black Americans believing this, 72%, was statistically greater than the proportion of white Americans believing this. And what this suggests is that black MSM incur significant anti-homosexual sentiment when interacting within black communities. But most importantly, we know that homophobia, particular for black MSM comes from institutions that have historically provided social support for black Americans, namely the families and the churches. And so homophobia experienced by black MSM is particularly del deleterious because it comes from institutions that we would expect to give us the support. And so as we think about HIV transmission and factors that are causally, potentially, potentially causally related to it, we know that homophobia results in psychological distress, things such as anxiety, depression, as well as internalized homophobia. And it also increases stress levels, and there have been a number of studies identifying increased stress due to homophobia in relation to adverse risk behaviors, such as engaging in substance use during sex. But particularly to black MSM, we know that homophobia results in the avoidance of HIV interventions, particularly interventions that are targeted or channeled through the gay community. And what this means is that these more proximal factors may be associated with unprotected anal intercourse, or UAI, which we know results in sexual transmission of HIV 
So given what we know, I'm going to briefly discuss findings from two studies re with respect to homophobia. And in the first study, some CDC colleagues and I investigated homophobia as experienced by black MSM living in New York City and Philadelphia. And our data came from the Brothers E. Hermano study, which examined correlates of HIV risk behavior among 1,140 black, adult black MSM. And all these men were recruited by way of respondent-driven sampling in which the men themselves drove the sampling technique. And we used homophobia measures that assessed negative experiences that men had solely because people thought that they were homosexual or not manly enough. So during the previous me year, men indicated the number of times that they were hit or beaten up, treated rudely or unfairly, or made fun of or called names, had to act more manly in a crowd of in, in order to be accepted, or felt uncomfortable in a crowd with straight black people. And based upon men's responses to these items, they were categorized as experiencing no, medium, or high levels of homophobia. Our UAI measure was based upon the past three months and varied by the HIV serous status of participants. For men that were HIV negative, we looked at the, the odds of engaging in any unprotected anal intercourse, which potentially was a risk. For those men who were positive, we assessed UAI with HIV negative or unknown serous status partners, or in other words, those to whom HIV could be transmitted. And we used multivariate statistical models that predicted the odds of engaging in UAI for men experiencing different levels of homophobia. So basically, what was the effect upon homophobia for sexual risk? And we found that among HIV negative men, experiencing high levels of homophobia was associated with a twofold increase in the odds of UAI during the past three months. For those men who were HIV positive, homophobia Phobia independently predicted a greater than twofold increase in the odds of UAI during the past three months. And in these models, we control for a host of variables that we know co-vary with both homophobia and unprotected anal intercourse. So basically, our findings show that homophobia was associated with UAI among black MSM, likely predicting both HIV acquisition for those men who are negative, as well as HIV transmission for those men who are positive. In the second study, some CDC colleagues and I examined homophobic experiences of young HIV-infected MSM in Milwaukee County, Wisconsin. And this investigation came about after the Wisconsin Department of Health Services invited us to investigate factors that were associated with increasing HIV diagnoses during 1999 to 2008 among MSM between the ages of 15 and 29 years. And we conducted our recruitment using clinicians and case workers at HIV and STD clinics in Milwaukee. We conducted in-depth qualitative interviews with 18 black and non-black MSM, and these interviews assessed factors that were likely or possibly associated with increasing HIV transmission, according to these men themselves. So during our qualitative interviews, we asked the men the following questions. What's causing HIV to spread in Milwaukee? What could have prevented you from becoming infected? And what is it like to be a young MSM in Milwaukee? And most of what the young men said about homophobia came from these three questions. To provide some overall context to these qualitative data, I'll present some supplemental questionnaire data from 44 young HIV-infected MSM who completed um, some structured surveys. And this group included the 18 men who underwent the qualitative interviews. Interestingly, all 18 of our 18 participants mentioned homophobia without being asked specific questions about it. And basically, this was something that men voluntarily discussed in relation to their lives in Milwaukee, highlighting it as an underlying social issue affecting the health of MSM. And what I really want to drive home today is the importance of homophobia predicting factors that we know place men at risk. And one of the most important findings that came out of the data related to housing instability. And this resulted when young men were forced to leave home because their families were not accepting of their sexuality. And this is important because being forced to leave home made young men vulnerable to HIV, namely through having to trade sex for money or housing. Men oftentimes discussed demoralization or, and guilt that they faced because of they, they were forced to leave their homes. And, and some of them talked about engaging in substance use to cope with the pain of being forced to leave home. Overall, four out of the 18 men who we talked to 
mentioned that homophobia resulted from housing, mentioned that housing instability resulted from homophobia experienced within their families. 